Thank you. So, hello. Um, over the past 25 years, you have only directed three movies, The Reflecting Skin, The Passion of Dark Noon, and Heartless. Can you talk a little about the main difficulties that you have made during the production of these three movies? Thank you. Well, the main difficulty about making the three films that I've done is trying to describe to people before I've made the film so that they can hopefully put the money into the film, trying to describe to them the kind of film that I'm going to make because when they read the script, the script is usually a very visual description of the, what I'm going to do, but there's no reference in their heads as to what film it should be like. I mean, you, the, the, the easy way to make a film is that you go in to a financier and you say, oh, I'm going to do uh, a film that's like so-and-so, and you mention a very famous film, and, and you say, well, if you read the script and you imagine the look and the feel of that film, then you know what you're going to get. But my films have never been like that. One, they have a script that is uh, uh, a new thing. They can't quite get their heads around the script. And then the visual look of the film, no other film tends to have looked like that. Um, before I've made the film. So with The Reflecting Skin, when I said I want to make this film and it's about um, a few friends, children growing up in the farmlands in the 1950s, and then everyone said at the time, oh well, uh, did you mean it's going to be like Stand By Me, the, um, uh, the film based on the Stephen King short story with uh, River Phoenix in, and I said, well, no, it's, it's not going to look like that at all. And then they said, well, uh, but that's a film with three boys <laughs> and childhood and it's about death. And I said, yeah, but there's other ways of shooting. So it's, it's been, the problem has always been trying to convey what the film is going to be. And to achieve that, what I usually do is that I do a whole sequence of um, images. I do paintings and I do collages and um, I do photographs. And, th and then I either put them out as a kind of sequence or with the reflecting skin what I did was that I made a slideshow and then I chose music that I thought was going to be the closest to the style of music that I would want to, have you, want to use in the film and then I did this projection of all the images and I played the music and I read out some of the dialogue to try and give people um, the, the, the idea of what the film's going to be. After that, of course, then you have the, another set of problems, which is once they've realised what you're going to do, it's to get the money. Um, so it's, it's always a battle because the films are not commercial films. They're, they're um, art house films and they're films of, um, they're very personal vision films. And it's become increasingly difficult now to get those off the ground, I think. Good. You are a writer, a poet. A director, director, you are writing some songs also. Have you, how have you found inspiration for so many different projects? Well, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think of them as different projects, really. I've never thought of what I'm doing as being different things. Um, I've, always, I've always described myself as just someone who wants to tell stories, as a storyteller. I just want to tell stories and it just so happens that sometimes the stories come out in different ways. I mean when I was when I was very young, when I was a child, from the age of about five I suffered very badly with asthma and I was either in hospital or I was at home in bed and I didn't really have a social life, I didn't really have friends or a, a kind of a network of people that were coming around and visiting me because I was never at school or playing out for long enough to make, uh, to socially inter interact and make friends. So I, I was very much alone and the, the way that I dealt with this, the way that I compensated for this was that um, one, I read a lot and the first things that I read were the Marvel comics. I read Spider-Man and the X-Men, they were my two favourites. So I guess, you know, the easy explanation in many ways is to say that right from the beginning I had images and words working together. I saw pages of just image telling the story and then I had writing telling the story. So the idea of telling stories using images and telling stories using words 
was there right from the beginning with me and I started to draw my own images and I started to write my own stories and then that subdivided that the images became drawn images and the images became photographs and collages and the written words became short stories and stage plays and screenplays but it all stems from that from that thing and and the, and the way that the way that I find it most useful to describe is that sometimes um, it's like when if you're in an aeroplane and you look out of the window of an aeroplane and you see the clouds below you and then there's peaks of what looks like different mountains sticking above the tops, sticking out the tops of the clouds but then it's not until you get underneath the clouds and you realize that all those peaks are actually just peaks of one mountain that actually it's not different mountains, it's just one big mountain that comes to different peaks at the top and I guess that the different ways that I tell the stories are the peaks at the top of the mountain but it all comes from one thing which is what's below the clouds Cool. Which is the actor you directed for cinema or theater who impressed or surprised the most? Oh, I've been lucky to <laughs> yes. work with so many great actors. It's yeah. kind of, um, there's been so many wonderful, wonderful actors in both theater, film, um, and I've been lucky enough to work with actors that, um, great actors at the beginning of their career, before they were famous. So I got their talent when it was really fresh and new and raw and I mean obviously um, in the films uh, working with Viggo Mortensen in The Reflecting Skin was incredible because he's just an absolute genius and uh, Viggo is incapable of striking a false note in whatever he does unless he totally understands it and believes in it and can find the truth in a moment then he won't do it So working with Vigo was fantastic. Working on the next film with Brendan Fraser, who was a remarkable, I mean, what a performance he gives in that film. Um, incredible talent, just absolutely incredible. And in the stage plays, you know, I, working with a young Jude Law, as I did in uh, my second stage play, the, uh, the Fastest Clock in the Universe. Working with Ben Wishaw in uh, my stage play Mercury Fur. I've been really blessed, I mean absolutely blessed with the number of uh, great actors. So I can't pick, there's no way I can pick one because not only are they all fantastic but they're all completely different in the way that they approach the work and uh, but what they all have is they are all touched with, um, I think they're all just touched with genius and it's, uh, it's been one of the biggest joys and thrills really of what I've done to have been part, just a small part, in what they've gone on to achieve, really. Do you think it's easier to finance films today? Sorry, can you say uh, Sorry, uh, do you think it's easier to, produ to produce or finance films today? Oh, I think it's, I think it's much more difficult to mm. make the kind of films that I want to make today than it was. Um, Well, particularly when I made The Reflecting Skin. I mean, I look back now. I mean, I thought it was hard to get The Reflecting Skin off the ground. But looking back now, boy, was it easy to get that off the ground compared to um, what it's like now. I mean, everything, not just in film. Um, uh, you know, everything's become, in a way, more commercial and more mainstream. Um, but in film, you know, perhaps more than anything, it's got that everyone's now completely obsessed with what a film makes in the opening weekend. The opening weekend's figures can make or break a film. And that means you're making a certain kind of film right from the beginning because there's only a certain kind of film that can open that big in that many cinemas and make that amount of money. So the mere fact that you're one becomes or they become obsessed um, uh, with uh, money in the first weekend dictates the kind of film that you're going to make. Um, and, I, and I think also it's just more difficult to find the outlets. Um, even if you end up making your film now, the number of distributors um, that would be willing to take uh, a very personal project on is less than it was definitely when I made The Reflecting Skin. And even if they take it on, the number of cinemas that are capable of showing 
or willing to show those films now is much less. They still exist, of course they still exist, but it's much less than it was when I made, um, when I made The Reflecting Skin. So I think it is, becoming, it is becoming more difficult, but then there's the other argument to be made, because there's always the other side of the argument. The other argument is that in many ways it's easier because there's now digital photography that you can be more in control of the films that you're making. You don't have to rely on such a huge amount of money to buy the film stock, which in some films that you might have made at that time were the biggest part of the budget if you were shooting on 35mm. So you can be much more guerrilla style filmmaking. So, you know, it's difficult, but there's ways, there's always ways of making the work that you want to make if you want to make it. You must never let, you know, you mustn't let the difficulties get in your way. You must find ways to uh, beat them. <laughs> you must find ways to surmount them. Good. What can you say about the theater, uh, theater sorry, play tonight with Donny Sticks, your, your last piece? My last play, Tonight with Donny Sticks, is about a, is a, is a monologue. It's for one, one young actor, one man, and it lasts about an hour and 20 minutes. And he tells the story of how he ended up committing an atrocity um, by, um, I, I don't want to give the end away, I don't want any spoilers, but I uh, <laughs> don't want to spoil the ending. But he is, Donnie Sticks has become notorious for um, uh, killing some people. And he takes you through the journey of his life um, to explain how that, ended up happening, how he felt he was pushed into a corner to end up reacting like that. And part of the theatre experience, you know, because it's a stage play, so part of the theatrical experience of how the audience sort of engages with Donnie is that you end up almost sympathising with where he is at the end, even though he is uh, performed uh, a horrendous act, you end up understanding and sympathizing with him because um, he has been forced in a way, he has been misunderstood and lied to during the course of this play and it's led to this, um, this, 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 this very dark ending. So it's a, it's a very confrontational piece in many ways, it's, very, it's a piece that makes you question yourself about how you're, how you're reacting to what you're watching and how you have to um, uh, reevaluate what you might have done in similar positions, both as somebody who might have known Donnie and also as, uh, as Donnie himself. Um, uh, you have to trust me when I say that it's, it, it, it's a lot better than I've just made it sound. <laughs> Good. Uh uh, the way youth is approached in your film, does it reflect your memories of that time in your life? Oh, in many ways, yes. I mean, when you make any work of art, really, when you create anything, it's, you can't remember or see that film without remembering that whole period. Yes. Um, I was joking with um, some people that had initially worked with me on The Reflecting Skin, um, that how I saw certain scenes and I can remember what was on the menu, uh, what we ate that day. I said, oh yes, that was the day we ate. I can remember what the kind of catering truck was serving up that day. So you remember, they become like little, they become like time capsules, really, um, for you. So it, 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 it's, a, it, it's a very, it, it, everything merges and everything blurs together. And that's, and that's one of the, the, the thrills um, you know, that's one of the thrills about it, that I can watch, say, The Reflecting Skin now, and I'm back there, you know, I remember exactly what I was thinking, exactly what I wanted to happen, um, exactly where I where it went wrong, like, oh, if I'd had one more take, I would have got that a bit right, oh, the camera should have been a few inches lower for that shot, and... Um, oh God! I was going to do another insert there of the hand picking up the cup. So you remember, you remember all the mistakes that you've made. I mean, everyone has been saying to me, um, "Oh, you know, when you see the film again now, 
are there things you would go back and change if you could? And I say, you know, I would have changed them the same day. <laughs> you know, if you had given me another hour on that day, I would have changed everything the minute after I shot it. So you're always seeing, you know, ways to improve what you've done. Okay, and my last question, what kind of advice could you give to someone who would like to work as a director? Oh, well, there's so much advice, really. So much advice to give. Um, I suppose the main thing is, um, you know, never don't dare, just do it. Just do it. If somebody else doesn't want to make it, then make sure you make it. Um, even if it isn't with the budget that you wanted it to have, just go out there and somehow just make it because don't wait for people. You know, you can wait a hell of a long time. Um, if you think you're filming something, if you think you've got an idea that nobody will understand, then that's every reason to make that idea. Because who wants to make something that everyone's going to understand? Because it probably just means you're making something that's been made already. So the more, the, the more difficult it looks like it is to get something off the ground usually means that's the more valuable and the more precious it is. So make sure that you do it. Just do it. Somehow just do it. And the last bit, which is something that I tell um, everyone really, no matter what art form they're doing with, is... Um, make sure you participate and don't anticipate anything. So don't just sit there anticipating something that's going to happen. Make sure you're just out, out there doing it. Now, this instant, today, yesterday. It's not something you should be doing tomorrow. It's something you should be doing now. Thank you very much for this good interview. Thank you very much. Thank nice you very to see much. you. Thank you.